All right, welcome to tonight's team training and inspiration. We're excited that you guys turned out. And um, like I said just a minute ago, Melody had a last minute cancellation. She is really, really sick tonight and she could not get on the call. So we hope you're not disappointed, but I am one of those people that firmly believes that things happen uh, for a reason and you make the best of each situation. And I believe that the right things will be taught and the right things um, that people need to hear will be spoken tonight. So I actually am not stressed out or worried or disappointed or anything because I know that um, you are going to learn and take away from this call a lot of really fantastic tips tools, inspiration that will help you in your business. She'll be back with us next Monday when she's feeling better. And so we'll have that to look forward to. But again, I just really feel like, you know, there is something that is going to come out of this that is going to be exactly what you need in your business, in your life right now. And as I was thinking about this, I was kind of laughing. I was like, well, Emily Gibson and I could give you all a lesson on like what it takes to go emerald in six or seven months, which is basically what Melody did. And she was going to share her story with us, but also where she comes from and how she did it. And I'm looking forward to that next week. But you guys have heard Emily and I train you a ton over the last three years about how we did it and how we created that massive momentum. And I'm going to talk for just a moment about momentum. And Emily, if you want to pitch in um, before I introduce Christy, you can for sure. Um, so I really want to get back to talking about some of the basic things that are so important to help you grow a team. Number one is belief. And Christy's going to talk a little bit about that. That is number one always in building a business is believing in yourself, believing in the products, believing in the company and the compensation plan. Those are numero uno, first and foremost. The second thing is you've got to start actually developing yourself, but not just developing yourself, developing a team. And that comes back to developing silvers and helping people to see the potential in themselves. So this week, today, Janelle Matisson and Nicole Brinkerhoff, they are at corporate. They both earned silver stars, and we've had a ton of people earn silver stars. Emily could type up all the names in the comments. Christy Jacks won silver stars. I earned silver stars. Like, tons of people on our team have earned silver stars. And as I think about Nicole and Janelle there at Silver Stars, I think there is absolutely no reason why each and every one of you could not earn silver stars. And so if you are a Ruby ambassador or below, I want you to write this out. I want you to make yourself a little vision board about Silver Stars and how that is something that you want to achieve. Going to corporate, having that experience was a huge belief builder for me. And the thing that gets you there is developing Silvers. And so this month, we are really focused on that me plus three, that power of three. We have the Dough You Love Me IPA Challenge. If you don't have the Dough app, you can still download it. If you are adamantly against doing it computerized, that's fine. You can still do it. You can download any IPA sheet and simply do the IPA. But getting into that basic consistent activity is what's going to help you to personally grow your team. And then anybody that has interest can do the same. It simplifies the process for you. There's an endless amount of resources on developing silvers. Emily has a great layout. We have great scripts. We have all these things in the files tabs. But the key is you taking it and actually doing it. The key is you taking what you know and actually applying it. And that starts with believing that you can actually create the result that you want to. And see, that's what Janelle and Nicole and Christy and everybody else that's earned silver stars. It started with believing, you know what? I'm going to go for this. I'm going to develop my team. I'm going to encourage these people that don't have interest in network marketing, don't think they can do it, don't think they can go silver. I'm going to take these people and I'm going to develop them to silver. And that's going to get me that spot in silver stars. And so if you're watching their trip or you've watched other people go to silver stars and you've thought, well, that could never be me. I want you to think again, it could be any of you. And I know that we are just getting started and so many more of you will earn this trip, but it will only happen if you actually apply the systems that we have. Emily, do you want to say anything about um, duplication and silvers and all that? 
Yes. So one of the things that was when, when Brooke and I first started, and I've seen so many of you struggle with this as well, is you're waiting for your runner. And you're saying, I need, you know, I, I, I'm just, I know they're going to come. My runner's coming. Or you're saying, I can't find anyone. No one wants to work the business. And the biggest thing that I want to caution you is beware of your words. Beware of the words you allow in your mind and beware of the words that come out of your mouth because they carry meaning and they carry energy. And one of the things that I have always tried to do is say, you know, I am my own runner. I will be my own runner and I will create momentum on my team and I won't wait for my team to do it. If my team wants to run with me, fantastic. But when my team slows down, I get excited because I get to dig in extra hard on my IPA. This week, I have loved this morning watching the Bob Heilig training, doing my dough, making sure I'm following up with my people. I have three people in our five-day challenge next week, making sure I'm sending follow-ups on people I'm talking to about the business right now, creating new friendships, new relationships that I'm going to eventually be able to share Plexus with. So what I would tell you to do is that if you want to grow a team, then get on it by your own accord and have those words come out of your mouth. Like my next runner is around the corner. My action determines the team of my growth, the, the growth of my team and put those words into your mind. Even if you don't believe them, right? Um, one of the things that, that I love, and I can't remember what book it was from. Maybe you can remind me, Brooke, but it's not the what to say when you talk to yourself. It's the other one where it talks about saying like, gosh, why is my, why do I have so many people wanting to do the business with me? And you're, they're affirmations, not affirmations. Secret code of success. Yes. Yeah, secret code of success. That's the one. So affirmations work better for me personally. Because whenever I'm in a moment of stress, I'll turn to Sean or the dog if I'm alone at my house and just be like, gosh, why are so many people wanting to reorder this month? I mean, it's amazing. They're just so many because that is more empowering than sitting and saying, gosh, why is everyone shutting off? I can't keep anybody on the products. It just automatically sends you down this rabbit hole of negativity. And you are the only one that can protect yourself from that. No one does it to you. No one does it for you. You and just you alone. So that is my best advice to you is if you want to change your team, it starts with you. Put your arrows out and serve others, but look at yourself when your team is not growing. That's all. So true. And, and look at everybody that you have and look at their potential. So often, like Emily said, we're looking for runners. We're looking for rock stars. We're looking for these people that are going to come in and just blow up our team. And sometimes we miss a lot of what we already have and we miss the potential that we already have. And the best advice I know all of us could give that are leaders in this team in the whole organization would be that you start this process early. You start asking people from the very beginning. It starts from the moment you start sharing and how you share. And that's why utilizing things like the sharing system, simplifying how you're reaching out to people, what you're sending them, all of these things are what lead up to you being able to say, hey, Harmony, you could totally do this. All you have to do is ask a question and send a video and then ask another question. It's really simple. And if you start from the very beginning that way, and if you haven't been doing it that way, which is not how I did it in the beginning, in the beginning I talked way too much and everybody had to be in a three-way message all the time. And it was like super time consuming and nothing that anybody could duplicate, although effective, not super duplicatable and very time consuming. And that is not what people are looking for. And so if you are starting from the very beginning, keeping it simple, you're going to make this doable and attainable for people. And we have such a gift with the Fast Start Silver and the whole 90-day Fast Start program that it is just something that every single person should at least be given the opportunity to know about. And so, like I said in the beginning, all of this stuff dials back to really the base 
of everything. And that is believing that you can do this. And here's what I'll say about that before I turn it over to Christy is that you don't walk into this type of business and you don't walk into network marketing thinking, I could totally do this. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to be a jewel one day. Like I know everything to do. Nobody walks into this thinking that. Everybody walks into this thinking they can't do it. They're not good enough. They don't have the skills. They don't have the network. They don't have the time. They don't have the relationships. They don't like everybody walks into this feeling that way. But how do we change feeling that way to another more empowering emotion that actually causes us to take the actions that we already know? You already know all the steps, but there is something holding you back. And Christy is going to share with us a little bit more about this. Hey everybody, I am so honored to have a really last minute chance to talk to you tonight. <laughs> we were at the taco for family home evening and I was like, oh yeah, Brooke, bring it on. We'll figure this out. <laughs> so um, first of all, I'm just going to share with you a little bit of a personal experience because um, I think a lot of you, I don't know what you know about my story or what you think of me. I have no idea. And honestly, I don't dwell there very often because I can't control it. And I just really don't care what people think of me. But I want to clear any sort of maybe lack of truth with my story. Because maybe some of you look at me and you go, oh, see, I'm not Christy Jax. I didn't hit Emerald in a year. Or I can't do this because, you know, look at her and you make judgments about maybe what my story and Brooke and Emily's and some of the leaders and the jewels on our team, you make judgments, straight up judgments about us and our abilities. And maybe you'd say, Oh, see, I can't do it. Cause I'm not like that. Or Phyllis, I love you. Um, or you say, you know, I, I didn't have the kind of like Brooke and Emily were saying, I didn't have the kind of network. I didn't have the skills. I don't have that crazy personality like Christy, like whatever your, your, I can't do it because, I want to clear that up. Did you guys know that I was scared to death to do this? Brooke and Emily know. I started the three-way message with them after I had been taking the products for 90 days, and I started to see huge results. I was the most skeptical chick you had ever met, you guys. I was snarky. I was like, they're on a, at a, on a Friday night talking about vitamins at Emily's house. Like, I am not ever doing that. That does not sound fun to me, right? I was super negative about it before I started. I want you guys to really believe that. But then after I started to feel the results, I was like, gosh, uh, my father started to like tell me I needed to do it. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I hate that stuff. And I, I had all the excuses. I couldn't do it because I'm too busy. I already work. I have, you know, three, four kids at the time. I don't, I don't have any room on my plate. I had all the excuses. But when I created that shift and I realized I needed to do this and I really drew my line in the sand, that's something that I think a lot of us don't do. If you're on this call and you're kind of wishy-washy and you're focusing on your excuses and you're saying, see, I'm just not like her or see, I, I don't know. You're kind of bartering with yourself to see if it's worth sticking with. I'm telling you right now, that's your problem right there straight up i'm telling you the truth because i love you if you're not committed if you have not drawn your line in the sand you are not going to get one person to follow you if you have so far you're good you're better than i am because i had to be super committed before i could get anybody to follow me and i want to tell you once i got that committed answer i was going to do this i did not ever look back Emily was coaching me. She was such a good tactical coach, giving me next step. Okay, now I know you're uncomfortable. We're going to do this. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. Sweat tacos to my waist for two years, you guys. I was so out of my comfort zone. I was like, girl, you're freaking me out. But I'm going to do it because I'm freaking committed. I made my decision. I committed. I believed that I could do this. Because if Brooke can do it, if Emily can do it, if I can do it, if thousands of other jewels in the company can do it, guess who else can do it? You. But you have to commit. You can't put one foot in, one foot out, and be looking at your excuses and making excuses. If 
that's what you're doing, you're not going to make this work. So step one is commit. Step two, and this is like not linear. <laughs> These are some ideas that I'm putting together right about now. I have some ideas here, but I would say step two. Um, if you have committed and you're like, I know I'm doing the things, like I still, but still, Christy, I can't get people to share. I still, I, you know, I reach out to people, everybody shuts off. Guys, I get it. We get it. Emily gets it. Brooke gets it. It happens to all of us. Anybody that has had success in this company, I want you to drop a one in the chat if you have had someone say, I'm so excited to do this. It's going to be awesome. And then they bail out. Drop a one in the chat. Every single person who's ever successful has that happen. So guess what? You don't really even need to talk about it. <laughs> like, it's not a problem. That is not a problem. That is part of this. So stop being shocked when people quit. They quit. And newsflash, they're going to quit. More people are going to quit, guys. You're going to have people say, I'm going to do this, girl. We're going to rock this. And you're like, okay, here's your next step. And guess what? They're never going to respond. So don't even talk about it. Like, why do we even need to waste our time talking about that stuff? It's going to happen, right? It happens to us. It is totally part of the deal. So here's what I, what I like to call it. It's called, let's get it, you know, the, the claw that's at like arcades where you can like put your money in and you can get a thing and whatever. And they dupe you because you can never actually grab the thing. It's like, right? You know what I'm talking about? The claw. Let's get a claw. Let's go into your heart and let's remove the drama. Boink. Except this is like coming out. Boink. No drama. We don't need it, guys. Drama is talking about those things that we know are going to happen. I know that sounds harsh. I'm saying this straight up because I want you to be successful. People quit all the time. It's okay. It's not a reflection of you. It's not a reflection of Plexus. It's not a reflection of them. It just is. So let's just get over it, right? Let's remove the drama and just not even talk about it. I don't call Brooke and say, hey, did you know that that person, they quit? Or I don't tell Emily, yeah, they quit. I, we don't even talk about it because it's just part of the game, guys. Just stop talking about it. <laughs> like, it's just drama. Like, the more you talk about it, the more you think about it, the more you dwell on it, guess what you're creating? More of it. So minimize the drama. Remove the drama, right? Don't give life to that stuff. That's not what I was going to talk about, but I just went off on a tangent. So just expect it. Like, put your hands up on the roller coaster and be like, yoo-hoo, people are going to quit. That means I'm on the ride, right? That means I'm going to have highs and I'm going to have lows, and I'm just not going to talk about it anymore. Just don't even talk about it. Don't think about it. Just keep moving forward, taking action. Okay. Do you? How many of you have ever felt paralyzed in your journey? Raise your hand. If you felt like, dude, I'm doing the things and I can't get results, or oh, people are quitting, blah, blah, blah. I have a couple of questions for you. First of all, write these down. When you feel paralyzed, when you feel overwhelmed, question number one, what are you focusing on? Most likely you're talking about people quitting. Am I right? I do it too. It's okay. But if that's how you feel, it's because your thoughts and your focus are on what's not going right. So where is your focus is question number one. If you feel paralyzed, the second question number two would be, are you focusing on things you can control? Okay. If you're focusing on things that you have no control over, you will feel paralyzed. You might as well just like, what's the word? Join like some, uh, what's complaining club. <laughs> you are, if you're focusing on things that you can't control, that's like signing up for feeling miserable. So it's okay. It's okay if you're focusing on that, but recognize it, be aware of it so that you can shift it. Cause guess what? You have control over what you focus on. If you have three people quit and you have one person that messages you and says, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. These products are changing my life. What are you going to choose to focus on and talk about? It is completely within your control. What you focus on. Don't talk about this anymore. Stop 
talk about this, focus on that. That's what you have control over is what you're focusing on, right? Uh, okay, the third question, if you are feeling paralyzed, stuck, picked on, whatever else, insert, are you focusing on results? Okay, if you're focusing on results, you're gonna feel paralyzed for sure, because we really don't have full control over results, do we? So if you're like, I had someone sign up this month, okay, first of all, don't talk about it. Just keep taking action, keep taking care of yourself, keep personally developing. Don't tell someone about it, they don't wanna hear about it, for sure. And your brain doesn't wanna hear about it, your heart. Don't even talk about it, but if you're focusing on results, you're gonna be frustrated, you're gonna feel paralyzed. So don't, so shift your focus, focus on action, baby steps. Um, the fourth thing is, are you overcome with fear? Everybody feels fear. It's part of the ride. Put your hands up. Woo! Guess what? You're going to feel fear. You're going to feel it. It's okay. Submit. You jumped on the roller coaster. It's going to be a ride. So don't talk about it. Like, stop talking about fear. We all feel it. I've had straight up sweat tacos for three years of my freaking life, guys. It's okay. It's okay. But stop talking about it. It's feel it, take a deep breath, and then focus on a baby step. If you're focusing, talking, thinking about your fear, then you're gonna feel stuck and paralyzed, okay? <clears throat> the last one, and this might strike a low chord, are you comparing yourself? Oh! Are you comparing yourself to someone else? Or, and this is one that I've dealt with recently, are you comparing yourself to yourself last year at this time? Oops. Are you comparing yourself to when you first started? Are you saying, oh, it just will never be like that again? Because da, 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 creating this drama, guys, get the claw, take the drama, whoop, let it go. No comparison ever serves, ever, 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 ever. A surefire way to feel paralyzed and stuck is to compare yourself to anyone, even yourself. Just stop it. It's not useful. No comparison. Focus on baby steps every day. Focus on personal development. Okay. Um, I want to tell you guys, last year at this time, I was entering a season of my business and my life where I was comparing the shiz out of myself to Brooke and Emily, to myself to other leaders in Plexus, and I was paralyzed. I was completely paralyzed. Brooke and Emily know the story. I'm not going to get into it because I only have like three minutes left to talk, and I will stick to it. But you guys, <clears throat> I was completely paralyzed. I was hiding from my team. I was not doing lives. I felt like I didn't have anything unique to offer because I have such amazing mentors. Who can relate with that? Who feels like, mm, these guys are so awesome. Like, what do I have to offer? Right? Why would I show up? What, my, I don't need to lead my team. They just need to do what Brooke and Emily are doing, or they need to just like follow someone else. Guys, chills head to toe. That is never useful. Because guess what? I'm not Emily. I'm not Brooke. They don't want me to be them. And I never will be. And my team doesn't want me to be them. My team needs me. And the sooner you can trust yourself, take ownership of your team and start to step into that space, you're gonna see more growth. Because it's all about the energy behind that. They're gonna love that, it's momentum. You're gonna feel it, you're gonna pass it, people are gonna, are gonna respond to that. But what got me out of that, and I wanna share this with you, everybody has, Emily says she's gone through this, every single leader has gone through this. So if you're going through it, it's okay. Have compassion for yourself. Wee, you're on the ride. If you experience these things, like, woohoo! You're doing it. That's what we've all done. Consider yourself in good company because we've all been there. We've all felt that. And it's okay. So how do you get yourself out of that? If you feel paralyzed, if you've ever felt paralyzed, drop a one in the comments. If you've ever felt stuck, paralyzed, like you don't have anything to offer, you don't know the next step. If you felt that, newsflash, everybody has felt that. Brooke Hemingway, who freaking kills the contest every year, and Emily, they feel it too. I feel it. I felt it. Okay, so what do you do when you feel paralyzed? You go back through those questions and you say, okay, where am I focusing? I'm going to make a concerted, intentional effort to focus on what's going right. 
write this down. I want you to write a list of your wins. So if you feel paralyzed, write a list of 10 wins from the last like two weeks. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to write down um, what is within my control. That's what I'm going to focus on. And I'm going to take baby steps, baby steps to do something that is within my control, right? Okay, and then I want you to say, right, guys, fear is okay. It's okay to feel fear. You're gonna feel it every day of your life till the day you die. It's not negative to feel fear. Feel the fear, take some deep breaths, give yourself compassion, shift your focus to what you can do, a baby step, and take a freaking baby step. That fear will melt as you take action. So don't resist the fear, just feel it, it's okay. But then take an intentional step in the right direction, a baby step. Um, and then I'm a huge advocate of immerse yourself in self-development. And it's because it's gonna help you remember who you really are. Did you know that all the BS, the drama, the fear, the comparison, all your focusing and the, the pity parties and the, the complaining, that's not who you really are. So when you're doing personal development, it's not teaching you something that you didn't know. It's helping you remember who you really are. So immerse yourself in that. Listen to podcasts. If you're having a day from hell and you feel like you just are paralyzed and you're the worst thing ever, just put podcasts in your ears until your ears fall off. Read books. That's the most important thing that you can do when you're feeling like that. Because you, as soon as you start to remember who you really are, and you, then you take action, you're going to break that cycle. You're going to interrupt that pattern. That's what's going to get you out of feeling stuck. Taking a baby step, give yourself compassion. But as you take that baby step, you're going to start to get momentum, personal, energetic momentum. The, the momentum Emily was talking about, you will never have that kind of momentum if you don't have personal, energetic momentum within yourself, right? So start there. Start there. Take a baby step. And it will start to snowball and that compound effect is going to start to kick in and then you'll be like whoa I'm not stuck anymore this is awesome but that's how to do it shift your focus take that baby step and always 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 give yourself compassion as you ride this ride that you are committed to who's committed to stay on the roller coaster stop talking about get off the roller coaster I hate that no, roller coasters are fun. Get on that roller coaster and just realize that you're going to have ups and downs. That's what roller coasters are. So stop being in denial and saying, ooh, why is it just going this way? Like, I wish it would just go like that. No, you don't. That's what makes life fun is this. It's a roller coaster. Love the ride, and it'll, it'll be more fun anyway if you just submit, right? You guys can do this. It's a matter of learning these skills, learning to believe in yourself, Personal development, take one baby step at a time and you will start to move forward. I love you all. Mwah. Amen, 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 amen. So there were a couple of things that you talked about that I'm going to kind of piggyback on here and some things I've been thinking about. And it's how like a lot of times we feel like we are doing all the things, right? Well, we do, we're do. we doing the IPA challenges and we're... Um, you know, we are posting and I was listening to a podcast by Brendan Burchard who wrote the book, High Performance Habits. And um, he talks about how going through the motions equals stealing your full potential. Because a lot of times we think we're doing all the things and we're going through the motions, but we're not doing any of it with belief behind it or excitement or, or this like, woo, this is fun. You know, we're not, we're not doing the work with that behind it. We're doing what's comfortable because, okay, we know how to post and we know how to copy and paste this message and send it. And, you know, we're not really putting our heart into it. We're not really taking the time to write an individualized message to someone. We're just kind of going through the motion sort of half-heartedly. And that steals your full potential. He talks about how habits are never automatic except the homeostasis habits. And the homeostasis habits are the ones that keep you the same. Homeostasis is like staying the same. That is your warm, comfortable, fuzzy zone that is the same, all that sameness. When something gets hard, that's when you need intentional activity 
to do that specific habit. So like Christy was saying, if you are down on yourself, if you are struggling with your mindset, you have to be intentional and have a personal development plan. And that might mean you take a walk for 20 or 30 minutes every day. And while you're walking, you listen to a podcast or you go on YouTube and you search inspirational video, motivational video, or you listen to books on audio, but you are intentionally working out that plan because you know, you've got to build a wall. You've got to build a fortress around your heart and around your mind so that all that crap doesn't get in there and shoot straight at your heart and shoot at your head. So you're building this wall and you're intentionally having a plan and putting it into place because otherwise the natural motion of things that I've seen is people say, well, I'm doing the things I'm posting. I'm doing my IPA. I don't really know what else to do. It's like, how's your head? How's your heart? What's your personal development plan? What are you doing? Okay. And then somebody uh, made a comment, you know, what do I do when I feel depressed about this? When I think about depression now, I feel a little bit different about depression. I think there's clinical depression, but I think there is also situational depression. And I have definitely felt situational depression on my journey of building my business. And that situational depression has typically come from not feeling like I'm enough, comparing myself to others, being really frustrated and upset that people quit, all like all of those things, a lot of which I couldn't control, and be letting those things get to me and bring me to this place where I felt situationally depressed. When this happens, the typical thing that I see and that used to happen to me and, and last for a long period of time, but that I see people to do, do is they start to retreat. They start to retreat and they say, I didn't really want this anyways. This is not good for me. This is really affecting my emotional health. All these different things that they say. When really they need to focus on understanding the underlying cause. What is really causing you to feel this situational depression? Is it when you get to the root of it that you feel like you're not good enough? Is it something that was said to you when you were growing up, like you'll never do this, you'll never do that, or you should just be a mom, or whatever kind of thoughts are going through your head? It's that garbage that's going through your head that is contributing to you feeling depressed. And the thing is, you will never feel satisfied in your life because this situation will just transfer to another situation. It will transfer into your marriage. It will transfer into your finances. It will transfer into your next job. It will transfer into your next opportunity because wherever you go, there you are. And if you don't work out what the real underlying beliefs are that are not true beliefs, they are false beliefs that are causing you to feel this way. If you don't get to the bottom of what those are, you will never achieve your full potential. You will go through your entire life going through the motions. You'll go through the motions in your marriage. You'll go through the motions in your parenthood. You'll go through the motions at church. You'll go through the motions in your business. And you will always eternally be frustrated because your soul and your spirit knows that you are better than that and knows the real truth. But if you just gloss it over and you just say, you know what, this just must not be for me. It just must not be for me. I've been in this place. I've been stuck for a year or two years. I've been senior gold or gold and, you know, nothing's happening. I heard, I don't know who said this, but I heard this this week. Somebody says, you're not stuck. You're stable. You're not stuck. Stop saying I'm stuck and start saying I'm stable. And then we need to dissect why are you stuck? Yes, divine discontent. I love that. Why are you stuck? This is something I've always felt very deeply inside, even before Plexus, um, is that I have always felt like the mind and the physical body, the emotions, the spirit, your physical health, your financial health, your relationship health, all of these things are intertwined. And if you are stuck, you have to take a good hard look at all the areas in your life. How's your relationship with your spouse? How's your relationship with money? Are you terrible with money? And here you are thinking, I just need to make more money. If you are not good with the money that you have, what makes you think 
that you are going to get more. And so this really causes you to go inside and to dissect like, okay, you know, what are my real problems? Do, how's my marriage? Am I, de- am I neglecting some things? Are things really not in a good place? And I need to focus a little bit more attention, a little bit more care there. Because if I do, that's going to free up space in my mind. And it's going to free up space in my heart that I can put into my business. But if I know in the back of my mind, in the back of my heart, like, you know, I've got 200 pounds to lose and I'm not really doing anything to change that, I know that my values are out of alignment. And I'm not calling anybody out on their weight. That's not what this is about. But you know what I mean? If your health is not in order and you're not living authentically and it's not about a size, it's that's not what I'm saying. Oops, Michelle, I got to mute you here. What I'm saying is that if what you're trying to do is not in alignment with what you're saying you want to create, you are going to be in this place where you feel like you can't move forward. And it's amazing once you get to the bottom of these things, whether it's in relationships or your own personal health journey or your finances, when you get to the bottom of these beliefs or these issues that are going on and you start to work on those and you start to clear those out, you start to create more space where this abundance and these blessings can flow into your life and your business just starts to expand. And it's not that you had to put in more time and more effort and more hours. That's not what it's about. It's about taking care of the things that need to be taken care of, digging up those false negative beliefs, working on those by filling your mind with good podcasts, maybe getting some coaching, maybe going to therapy, whatever it is you need to do, having real deep heart-to-heart conversations with your spouse, being who you really are being authentic. When you do these things, your business starts to expand. And I want to be really clear here. I am not saying that you need to have everything in the perfect place before your business can grow or before you can work your business. Because I've been on one hell of a roller coaster ride the last three years, like crazy. Emily to Christy, like all on a crazy roller coaster ride. We are still on the roller coaster ride. Does that mean we just dropped out and stopped working our business because there were days that we didn't feel like we could do it or weeks or months where we felt like we couldn't do it? No, that is when I dug in even more, dug into the personal growth, dug into the runs where I would cry, listening to the songs, listening to the podcast, tears down my eyes, working out all this stuff. This is your opportunity to really become who you are. This is important. This is crucial. If you feel like you're stuck, it means something's got to be addressed. And you don't have to wait until you're perfect because you'll never be perfect. So just let go of that. That's not a thing. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for the perfect testimonial. You don't have to wait until you lose 100 pounds. You don't have to wait until you're out of debt. You don't have to wait for any of these things. You share your journey along the way because people are looking for you to be authentic. If you struggle with your weight, you share that on social media. If you struggle with finances, you share that on social media. If you struggle in relationships, you you share that on social media. Doesn't mean you have to air all your dirty laundry, but you guys know what I mean is people are looking for real. They connect to that. They connect to vulnerability. You do not have to be perfect to show up in your life and to show up in your business. And when you show up in the hard times, you prove to yourself what you are made of. You prove to yourself that you can do hard things. And that strengthens you. It strengthens you in all areas of your life. And I'm going to leave you with one little thought here. When I was listening to this Brendan Burchard um, podcast, He talked about how, you know, even for him, like being this high performance, you know, habit person and this millionaire, like there are so many days when he doesn't want to do the things that he has to do. He doesn't want to answer the emails. He doesn't want to answer the messages. Oh, and you know, he could just sit down in front of Netflix and watch three hours of Netflix or go and do something else or just because like that's more comfortable. And he, he said, what you need to do before you sit down 
to do your work is you need to sit at your desk and close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes right now. Okay, close your eyes. Ask yourself this question. Who needs you on your A game? Who needs you on your A game? Somebody out there needs you on your A game. Somebody out there needs you to rise to the occasion, to show up, to become the person that you already are that's hiding down inside, to drop all the excuses, to drop all the reasons why you can't, to drop all of the scarcity, to let all of that go and to just show up because there is somebody, in fact, there are hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of people that need specifically you to show up in your A game. And my challenge to you is to do the personal work so that you can show up on your A game for the people that only you can change their life. So thank you guys for showing up tonight. That's our message for you. We love you. Next week, we'll get to hear from Melody. Say a prayer for her that she'll feel better. We absolutely love you guys. Mwah. Good night.